good morning dear students friends we are doing unit 10 international business and first two topic 10.1 and 10.2 we have discussed today we will discuss next topic 10.3 export trade procedure and documents okay so first of all meaning of export trade students when the trader of one country sells goods to the trader of another country then it is called export trade okay so a trader who sells goods is known as the exporter and trader who purchases goods that is known as importer so like the import trade many formalities are fulfilled in the export trade also so there is a fixed procedure to fulfill this uh, these formalities which is known as a procedure of export trade okay so during this procedure various documents are prepared in this chapter we will study the procedure of the export trade and various documents used during the this procedure okay so meaning it refers to the selling and shipping of goods or services to another country now procedure next point first thing so the trader who wants to export has to contact some export commission agent the export agent or export broker with their help he can find out the place where his product is in demand export agent export broker ya fir jo goods ko idhar udhar export karwate hain wo agents jo hote hain unke through ye log jankari nikalwate hain information nikalwate hain ki kahan par unke product ki jo demand hai wo sabse zyada hai so after establishing contact with the importer ab jahan par unko jisko bhi need hai un products ki to importer se contact establish karne ke baad he explains to him about the specification of his product and terms of payments theek hai to importer ko apni sari terms and conditions of product ke bare mein sari knowledge dete hain then many a time the exporter directly receive an inquiry from the importer the things which are inquired about the about by the importer are the price of product type packing time taken in delivery terms of payment etc okay so the exporter sends a reply to the inquiry in the form of a quotation that is referred to as pro forma invoice okay that is related to the prices okay second point is receipt of indent after having done the uh, trade inquiry importer sends the indent indent means order importer send karega indent kisko to the exporter so in this in, uh, indent the name of the product type price quantity packing method time of sending goods insurance instructions payment method etc are mentioned okay if everything is explained properly in indent it is called close indent okay if uh, some information is given means incomplete means things have not uh, been mentioned completely then it is called open indent okay so in this case exporter takes many decisions as per his own uh, discretion okay third point is credit inquiry before proceeding further exporter want to satisfy himself regarding the payment of goods for this he demands a letter of credit from the importer so this letter of credit is issued by the importer's bank in favor of exporter we have discussed in import trade these things okay so through uh, this letter of credit bank gives the assurance to the exporter of accepting the bill of exchange of certain amount okay so if required the exporter can ask for advance payment also from the importer तो ये एश्योरेंस मिल जाती है उसके बैंक से कि पेमेंट हो जाएगी ये बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज एक्सेप्ट कर लिया जाएगा uh, और अगर रिक्वायरमेंट है एक्सपोर्टर की तो एडवांस में पेमेंट भी इम्पोर्टर कर सकता है ठीक है तो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन इम्पोर्टेड दीज थिंग्स नेक्स्ट पॉइंट इज फोर्थ ऑप्टेनिंग एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस जिस तरह से इम्पोर्ट लाइसेंस की नीड थी ऐसी सेम एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस की भी नीड है सो आफ्टर सेटिस्फाइंग हिमसेल्फ अबाउट द पेमेंट द एक्सपोर्टर हैज टू गेट एन एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस 
एक्सपोर्ट uh, करने के लिए भी लाइसेंस जो है वो जरूरी है सो फॉर रिसीविंग द एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस ही हैज टू अप्लाई टू द ऑफिस ऑफ कंट्रोलर ऑफ इम्पोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट सो अलॉन्ग विद दिस एप्लीकेशन ही हैज टू डिपॉजिट अ सर्टन फीस ऑल्सो ओके सो द कंट्रोलर ऑफ इम्पोर्टर एंड एक्सपोर्टर चेक द एप्लीकेशन थोरोली एंड आफ्टर हैविंग सेटिस्फाइड हिमसेल्फ इशूज एन एक्सपोर्ट लाइसेंस टू द एक्सपोर्टर राइट so the export license is usually valid up to 3 months after 3 months again uh usko fir se ye issue karana hoga right fifth point is declaration regarding foreign exchange as per the foreign exchange uh act 1947 every exporter has to declare that after receiving the foreign exchange from the importer he will deposit it in the reserve bank of india Within the prescribed time limit, RBI जो है वो इसको एक्सचेंज करते हैं ठीक है बट नाउ अ डेज दिस प्रोविजन डज नॉट अप्लाई इन नाइनटीन पॉलिसी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट केम इन टू दोर्स फॉरन एक्सचेंज मार्केट वॉज स्टैब्लिश इन इंडिया सो अभी यहाँ पर हमारे पास फॉरन एक्सचेंज मार्केट है सो एनी पर्सन कैन सेल और परचेज फॉरन करेंसी टेक्स प्लेस इन दिस मार्केट ओके सो इट मीन्स दैट इफ द एन एक्सपोर्टर रिसीव फॉरन करेंसी either he can sell it in the open market and he can keep it with himself but he can keep the foreign currency with him up to a certain amount okay sixth point is fixation of exchange rate exchange rate means uh, that is the rate at which the currency of one country is exchanged with the currency of another country sabhi country ki jo currency hai unki value jo hai wo different hoti hai so this rate keeps on changing with the change in demand of the currencies in the foreign exchange market so usually there is a time gap between the sending of goods and receiving the payment of goods so it is possible that the rate of exchange changes within this period of time jaise dollar hai dollar ka rate kam zyada hota rehta hai so maybe aaj order diya hai aur receiving aapki after one month hai to after one month rates different ho sakta hai so with the this change in exchange rate the importer can make profit as well as uh, incur some loss ओके फॉर इंस्टेंस क्लियर ही हो गया जैसे कि बीच में वन मंथ का गैप था तो उस गैप में रेट uh, जो है डॉलर का बढ़ भी सकता है और कम भी हो सकता है दोनों ही केसेस में हु विल सफर हु विल बी सफर मींस इंपोर्टर इंपोर्टर कैन मेक प्रॉफिट भी हो सकता है उसको एज वेल एज इनकर सम लॉसेस ओके नेक्स्ट सेवन पॉइंट इज कलेक्शन ऑफ गुड्स आफ्टर रिसीविंग द ऑर्डर ऑफ गुड्स एंड फाइनलाइजेशन ऑफ ऑल अदर टर्म्स एंड कंडीशंस the exporter collect the goods okay if the goods are in his stock they are assorted and duly packed and if not in stock then they are purchased from the other supplier okay goods collect kare then eighth point packing and marking of goods after collection of goods the exporter packs and makes and uh, sorry and marks the goods as per the instruction of the importer if no clear instruction have been given by the importer then practices already prevailing in trade are followed okay while packing it should be done in such a manner that goods reach the destination safely main objective of marketing the goods is to save inconvenienced uh, caused in recognizing them hence marking signs should be clear okay packing and marking of goods okay then appointing uh, sorry appointment of forwarding agent when the goods are ready for dispatching then forwarding agent is appointed yahan bhi hum ek agent ko appoint karenge the forwarding agent takes care the procedure we start from taking the delivery of goods either from the road transport or railway transport okay and loading it on the ship koi bhi kisi bhi tarike se jaise bhi aap goods ko wo bej rahe hain he changes some commission <clears throat> he charges some commission from the exporter for this work okay next step is 10th forwarding goods to the port after packing the goods and appointing the forwarding agent the exporter transport the goods to the port goods are usually sent by railway so the exporter sends the railway receipt agar railway se aa rahi to railway receipt jo hai us send karenge to the forwarding agent with which he takes the delivery of the goods okay 
Then eleventh point is functions of forwarding agent at port. So a forwarding agent is has performed uh, some functions. First is the obtaining the shipping order. After the arrival of the goods at the port, the forwarding agent talks to a shipping company so that <clears throat> the shipping company reserve some safe place for the goods. After this agreement, shipping company issues the shipping order. So in the shipping order, the captain of the ship is instructed to load the goods on the ship mentioned in the shipping order. Okay. If the quantity of the exporter goods is too large, then a full ship can be taken on trade. So this agreement is called charter party. Okay. Second is preparing shipping bill. So for paying the export duty, the forwarding agent prepares the shipping bill in a uh, tra uh, triplicate. In this shipping bill, quantity of the goods, price of goods, address of exporter, address of the importer, number of the ship, and number of items are mentioned. Okay, this bill ke andar jo uh, ye sab chijiye mention hongi. So on the basis of the detail furnished in the shipping bill, export duty is determined. After the payment of export duty, custom official keeps one copy of the shipping bill with himself. And hands over the remaining two copies to the forwarding agent. Okay, two copies is me forwarding agent ko mili hai, right? Third point is payment of dock dues. Permission of dock authority is required to carry the goods to the port to load them on the ship. Dock officers जो हैं वो permission देंगे को only after the payment of the dock dues. Dues. जब dock dues clear हो जाएंगे उसके बाद permission मिलेगी. Okay, and for paying the dock dues, dock chalan is prepared in the duplicate. After paying the dock dues, one copy is returned to the agent as receipt. एक जो copy है वो return कर दी जाती है agent को. ठीक है. Now the port officers arrange for loading the goods. अब यहाँ port officers वो arrange करेंगे goods को load करने के लिए इसमें ship में. So at this time a copy Each of the shipping order and shipping bill is handed over to them. उनको भी एक कॉपी दी जाती है, so this makes it clear about the name of the ship on which the goods are to be loaded. यहाँ पर उस ship का name mention होता है, उसमें कौन सी goods load की जा रही हैं, that the export duty has been paid. Okay. Next fourth point, obtaining mate's receipt. When the goods have been loaded on the ship, then the captain of the ship gives a receipt of receiving goods. On the ship, which is called mate's receipt. Okay, this receipt is of two types. If the goods loaded on the ship were in good condition and packing was good, and captain of the ship is fully satisfied with that, a clean receipt is issued. Okay, and secondly, if the pack of goods was unsatisfactory, then a foul receipt is issued. Okay. मेड्स रिसिप्ट में भी दो तरह की है क्लीन रिसिप्ट अगर सब कुछ सेटिस्फाई है पैकिंग बहुत अच्छी है सब कुछ बढ़िया है तो क्लीन रिसिप्ट देंगे अदरवाइज फाउल रिसिप्ट जो है इश्यू की जाएगी फिफ्थ पॉइंट इज बिल ऑफ लेडिंग फॉरवर्डिंग एंड अलोंग रिसिप्ट में जो हमसे पहले जिसमें क्लीन और फाउल रिसिप्ट है so along with this receipt goes to the office uh, of the shipping company there he fills the form of the bill of lading and deposit it along with the mate's receipt in the office of the shipping company officer in charge jo hai keeps the mate receipt with him wo apne paas rakhenge is receipt ko and return the bill of lading to the forwarding agent forwarding agent ko bill of lading jo hai wo uske badle mein de denge after signing it so if the freight of the ship is to be paid in advance agar wo freight advance mein pay kiya gaya hai then the signed bill of lading is received only after payment of the freight okay details of the goods are mentioned in the bill lading is already mentioned in the mate's receipt wo dono mein mention hota hai then sixth point is insurer of insurance of goods forwarding agent makes is from various insurance companies and after a thorough check the most suitable company is instructed to issue the marine insurance policy okay and seventh point is advice to the exporter after finished 
finishing this work completely the forwarding agent inform the exporter through an advice letter along with the advice letter all the required documents jo bhi isko bhi mile hain detail of the expenses and commission are also sent wo usko se aage usko send kar dega with jitne bhi usne kharch kiya hai aur jo bhi uski commission bhi banti hai wo sab usko isko karega send exporter ko right then 12th point is preparing invoice after receiving information from the forwarding agent after the loading of goods an exporter prepares the invoice okay ab exporter prepare karega apna invoice okay the invoice is prepared on the basis of the terms and conditions decided upon between the exporter and importer jo bhi unke beech mein decided tha uske accordingly ye invoice prepare kiya jayega okay and next point 13 obtaining invoice certified by counselor so some countries recognize the certified invoice not the invoice only such invoices are issued by the trade counselor of the importing country situated in the exporter country theek hai kai bar ye invoice jo hai wo counselors jo hai wo issue karte hain if the certified invoice is available the customs authorities are not required to open the whole cargo to check whether the prices are as per the specifications mentioned in the invoice in the absence of certified invoice they can open the whole cargo to check the goods agar certified invoice nahi hai to fir wo pure cargo ko pure cargo ko wahan par goods ko check karte hain open karke theek hai 14 point is certificate of origin if they import goods produced in some specific countries kuch countries agar aap specifically kisi kisi country se agar aap mangate hain to sometimes import duty jo hai wo uske upar exemptions hai so these exemptions exemptions is available only if the certificate of origin of the exporter has been attached along with this invoice agar invoice ke sath wo attached hai tabhi uske wo exam liye means wo charge nahi kiye jayenge so this certificate is issued either by the secretary of the chamber of commerce or by any other officer appointed by the government to do so okay 15th point is preparing documents relating to the payment after payment are prepared bahut sare documents bhi prepare kiye gaye hain unki payment bhi ki gayi hai so the term and conditions of payment can be a various types first is the Document. then that what are rights uh, document against payment on the bill. this means that after making payment in the bank the importer can take the documents related with the goods iska matlab ye hua ki payment hone ke baad bank mein payment hone ke baad uh, importer jo hai wo can take the documents wo apne sare documents le sakta hai goods se related okay second is documents against acceptance if uh, the bill of exchange of the further date is to be accepted agar maan lo bill accept kiya gaya hai bank ke through then the exporter writes a uh, document against payment or uh, documents on the bill this means the importer can take the documents related to the goods from the bank after accepting the bill of exchange a bill of exchange ko accept karne ke baad wo le sakta hai okay and third is the bill on bank when the importer has sent the letter of credit jab importer ne bheja hai letter of credit then the exporter writes a bill of exchange on the bank issuing the letter of credit so the bank to which documents have been sent releases the documents only after getting acceptance from the importer so writing the bill on bank is called documentary credit under this method it is necessary to send the documents related to the goods to the bank so documents cannot be sent directly to the importer jo document hai wo directly kabhi bhi importer ke paas nahi jayenge through bank jayenge okay next last point is 16 point advice to importer after completing all the formalities the importer is informed about the name of the bank where document have been sent ab jahan par bhi usko uh, exporter ko sare documents send karne hain uh, importer se naam pucha jayega so it is not necessary that the documents should be sent to the bank only aisa koi zyada zaruri nahi hai if there is no problem regarding the payment agar payment se related koi issue nahi hai to directly importer ko bhi sare documents send kiye ja sakte hain so usually the exporter deposit the 
documents in this bank uh, in his bank and this bank sends the document to the foreign branch or its agent bank abroad so after fulfilling the terms of payment the importer releases the document okay and uh, in this chapter we we used uh, many documents so some important documents to be used in export trade are first of all uh, indent okay second is letter of credit then export license okay then railway receipt shipping order shipping bill dock chalan mates receipt bill of lading marine insurance policy invoice invoice certified by counselor certificate of origin and advice to importer okay these documents we have used in export trade so dear students revise this topic and make notes well thank you have a nice day